I would do it from now on, sir. I swear. Why should I believe that? During my talk with him, Resta Cruz actually gets down on his knees. The tears keep flowing as the police arrest him, but his sob story may seem less convincing once we show you what the police find in his truck. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grim. Today we have another classic TCAP reaction for you, and this one is yet another of a person that has a very high role in society with their career and their job. This is a staff sergeant in the military that gets caught, and for some reason, when I saw this thumbnail and this video and thought about reacting to it, it felt like I have like almost reacted to this before, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. He just looks very familiar for some reason, like some of these other guys we've covered. And I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the next Big Ed video. I'm just letting you know that is up next, I promise but there are some issues with uploading those I have to you know do a lot of editing to try to figure out how to not get it taken down because TLC does not mess around sometimes with that even though I just want to react to the good ed portions with you guys and not the entire show or anything but without any further ado let's just get right on into this and watch this guy realize that his life is about to fully go down the drain as soon as he walks into this house I made some sweet tea it's on the table I just gotta put this stuff in the washer real quick. Resta Cruz comes in, sees the tea, pours himself a glass, and makes himself right at home. I said, well, well, nice tea. Oh, how you doing, sir? Good. How much have a seat? <laughs> I love how rapidly they just get to work in these earlier episodes, dude. I mean, I got used to this series kind of, you know, reacting to the newer age where it wasn't even technically Dateline NBC anymore. It was just more a Chris Hansen thing that he was doing, I believe. And in those, they, you know, talk to the decoy for quite a long time. In this one, they are not messing around. This guy walks in to pour himself some tea and boom, there's Chris Hansen. Time for the investigative section of this and the time where this guy's heart rate just doubles, probably. I don't know how they haven't had a heart attack on this show with just how shocking that has to be for some of these guys but let's see this dude's reaction as he realizes yet again like i said earlier that his life is about to permanently change for the worse as a result of him being a creep and showing up to this house after speaking to this decoy for who Bruh. knows how long on the internet well who are you here to see i was going to meet her that's it meet who your daughter my daughter fooling around sir resta cruz makes it clear online that he knows what he's doing is wrong. He even tells the decoy not to tell her parents. Wow, that is a whole nother world of messed up. When these guys show intention and they show that they are manipulating this person that they're talking to online, that yet again, they think is a way younger age than they actually are. You know, it's really just some old dude that works for this investigation department talking to them. But instead, in their minds, they're really speaking to this person and they're real. Some of the things they tell them is absolutely, dis well, all the things they tell them are absolutely disgusting. But stuff like this, where they're really trying to be like sneaky and be like, don't tell anyone, we gotta keep this our little secret. That is just the creepiest, most messed up stuff ever. And I love how this dude also thought that Chris Hansen was this person's uh, dad. I'm sure most of the guys in these situations are kind of, you know, fiddling back and forth with who they think Chris Hansen is. A lot of them probably think he's law enforcement, but for the most part, they also think, oh, this might be the dad of this kid. And I do not want to be facing that wrath right now. Even though for some, getting jumped by the dad is a lot less bad than actually being seen by the cops and taken in for questioning and going to jail for any period of time. So you ever been with an old guy before? No, I need you to stay in the chair, please. Just please. I'm just sit down, please. Please, sir. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Wait, is this guy related to the dude who had his shirt up in those earlier episodes? Maybe that's why this is feeling so familiar because he just gets down on his knees and starts praying and gives him the please, sir, sir, please, sir, please. That's like the number one catchphrase for these dudes when they're just freaking out and don't know what to do. You're begging Chris for forgiveness, almost Bruh. as if he is their God in this very moment and they are asking for repentance. But nope, that is not coming. Instead, Chris is just going to continue to read these terrible transcripts that prove just how badly these guys are getting themselves into trouble. This is quite beautiful. I mean, not even one question in and this guy already got off the seat and is on his knees praying for forgiveness. How insane is that? I'm divorced. I just divorced. Yes. You're divorced. Yes. And you have children? Yes. And how old are your children? Three. How old? Three. Three. And it's just so terrible that a lot of these people that are on this show are family men that have families of their own. And it's, it's disgusting to think about that they have their own children that they're raising. And then on their off time, when they're outside of work and their family life, they're doing this, this despicable act. This is just mind blowing that so many of these people were able to actually secure a normal relationship with somebody and start a family and still have these crazy delusions. And much like I say in many of these episodes, it proves that no matter what someone's career is, what their outside 
life may look like. You don't know what true sort of sickness could be going on inside their head. Now, I don't say that to be wary of everybody in the world, like I'm not trying to fear monger here, but it definitely is terrifying to think about how normal some of these guys seem on the outside. You would not expect it until they showed up to this house themselves and proved themselves to be a creep. Sir, please. I'm leaving. I'm, I, need, I, I don't know what bother you anymore. Please. I wasn't going to please, I swear. And the freaking mics that they have set up can't even catch what this guy's saying very well because he is literally looking down to the ground as if he is just some follower of like a Daedric god in Skyrim and is about to be smited for his actions or something. You can beg for forgiveness all you want, but these crocodile tears do not work. This guy is simply crying because he got caught and for no other reason, okay? That's something to remind yourself of these. Now, I know I'm saying like, you guys gotta remind yourselves. A lot of you watching this know that this guy is in the wrong and nobody's actually feeling bad for him, but I know there's some people out there that can be manipulated by this kind of thing and that's why I say that because these guys deserve no sympathy whatsoever if anything they should be shamed and laughed at which is exactly what this series is for and why I think it's so beautiful you know sometimes when I'm doing these reactions I think do I really need to be going this hard on these people and thankfully with this series the answer is 1000% of the time yes they deserve it and then some if anything I go very light on these freaking creeps but that's mainly because I'm trying to play by the rules of YouTube and uh yeah you know how that goes in 2022 Anyways, let's keep going. Now, you're in the military. Yes, sir. And you've been to Iraq? Yes, sir. Well, you joined the military. You were expected to uphold a certain level of behavior. Yes, sir. I would do it for now, sir. I swear. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I did swear to, you know, I took an oath to, you know, uphold certain values. And from now on, I swear I'll hold those. For, before that, I, I wasn't doing it. For, but from this point forward, if you let me go right now, I promise I'll be a good guy. Like if that isn't just a guilty person speaking to save their own ass, I don't know what is because this dude simply does not care until he gets in trouble and now he's doing all the fake crying and theatrics but before that he was perfectly happy and smiling walking into this house thinking that it was just the decoy home alone you know the experts would suggest that when somebody does something like this it's not their first time it's the first time sir. i swear it's the first time and of course, much like every other creep on this show, I mean, this has to be maybe the centerpiece of the bingo card that I keep talking about if we were to play bingo with TCAP episodes is this is my first time because that is something without a doubt, almost everybody says, and it is provably false. Some of these guys have been caught before by the same sting operation just when they weren't filming the show because they're still trying to catch these, you know, creeps outside of doing the show with Chris and working with law enforcement. So some of these guys have a proven track record. I'm not sure if this guy does necessarily, but it's just mind-blowing they think they can honestly say that and anybody would believe a word they say in this position like you're down on your knees begging for forgiveness clearly you know you've done something terribly wrong and clearly this is not your first time doing it sorry to say buddy but you're screwed yes sir. Have you ever watched dateline nbc yeah all well, the cops and everything i know you ever see the, the catch up yes i'm not a pedophile i'm i'm chris hansen with dateline nbc and we're doing a story now, if there's anything else you'd like to say, say it, please. Like to hear it, otherwise you're free to walk right out of this house. And man, just think of this dude's life. Like, I honestly feel terrible for his family, obviously, because that's about to fall apart as a result of this. But this dude pulled up in a brand new, at the time, super souped up Ram truck. You know he's making big bucks here in the military. He worked hard in his career to get to where he's at. I have no idea, you know, what rank staff sergeant is. My only experience with military ranks is Call of Duty. And uh, apparently, prestiges are not a thing in real life. So that's not that accurate to go off of, guys. So I have no freaking idea. But I'm guessing staff sergeant is pretty high up. And it's a probably very difficult position to get to so if this guy was willing to throw that away it just shows that his creepiness outweighed all of that in his life it outweighed his family his career his future he was willing to give that all up to act on these creepy thoughts of his and that is absolutely terrible and shows just how down bad this guy was can i go yes absolutely please don't put this in tv don't put this in tv please no decisions have been made yet I swear I will never do this again. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave now. 
Chris does not care about your pleas. He says, get out of my house, you creep. We caught you. We did the reveal. Now it's time to transfer over the responsibility of the police. Get out of here, dude. You can cry all you want, but why don't you cry in the interrogation room? And that's exactly what he does. Let's see the cop arrest right now, because we all know that part's amazing as they walk out with their head low, knowing what's to come as soon as they leave these front doors. That is the best moment of the show, truly. Hey, I'll sit up. Hey, I'm sitting up. The tears keep flowing as the police arrest him, but his sob story may seem less convincing once we show you what the police find in his truck. And you know what they found in his truck. A bunch of balloons, you know, those uh, long cylindrical balloons that are very hard to rip, uh, as well as just some other miscellaneous things. Basically, the starter kit for every creep that shows up to these houses with these decoys. So yeah, that shows intent, and hopefully he went away for a very long time. Let me know what you thought of this episode down in the comments below. It was hilarious that this dude spent the entire time down on his knees begging for forgiveness, not even willing to be eye level with Chris because he knew he was that small of a man in that very moment. And I'm glad that he got shamed in front of the whole world. Again, F in chat for his family because obviously that's very uh, terrible to see this happen to somebody that they thought was not a creep, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. When you choose to speak to people online like this and then still show up to their house, you're going to get your comeuppance. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching until the very end. Again, next video should be a big ed one for you. Thank you so much for your patience on that. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out.